All right, and welcome back. I'm continuing to work on the uh, rear spar for the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, this is the finishing touches for the uh, rear spar. And my dad has come out again to supervise and see what I'm doing on the plane. Uh, he likes to come out every once in a while and kind of see where things are going and see what's uh, going on in the shop. So I'm kind of going over some finishing things real quick and uh, now starting to kind of explain to him where I'm at in the process and and uh, particulars that I'm working on at the moment. Um, kind of discussing how everything's supposed to look and how it's supposed to work and uh, as I get the pieces and kind of explain like uh, here the the uh, elevator horns kind of explaining how they hook up and and what each of the pieces do here and uh, as I'm looking at this this is where I discover that oops the uh, bearing bracket isn't quite as level as it should be and uh, so this is where I finally go in and fix it and correct it, which means drilling out the six rivets that uh, that are holding it in place and then uh, redoing it. And like I said, initially I had clamped it down to the tabletop. Uh, now I've here I've zoomed in to kind of show the process of, of what I'm doing. But uh, like I said, I initially used the tabletop. Uh, here you see me using the back rivet plate and I uh, clamp the the uh, bearing bracket to the back rivet plate and uh, click it in place and and uh, set the rivets uh, that way and after doing it this way it seemed to help I don't know if maybe the first time I just didn't clamp it down correctly or if perhaps when I was setting the uh, rivets I set it kind of cockeyed I'm not sure uh, but Whatever happens, uh, doing it this way seemed to help at least, so um, it, it uh, came out much better the second time around. And so just resetting the, the rivets and uh, going through that process. And like I said before, I, I've edited out kind of the, the uh, mundane, uh, re repetitive stuff, um, try to speed up these videos a little bit. Um, so anyway, got it all back together, and now I am putting in the bolts that hold it to the aft spar. Now this is an area where I uh, messed up, unfortunately, um, and I'll explain that a little at the end of this video. Um, but uh, there's there's a section in the forward part of the instructions, uh, I believe it's section 5.2, that talks about torque specs for various bolts and nuts and uh, so I went out and got a couple torque wrenches from uh, Harbor Freight and uh, they're relatively inexpensive but they're the breakaway type of torque bars so you can set the the tension the torque tension on the uh, on the uh, wrench and then when it reaches that amount of torque it kind of breaks and, and, and shifts a little bit I mean I can't even call it a break because it's not very pronounced um, but because I wasn't uh, accustomed to the small amount of give that it, that you feel when you reach the torque spec, I went right through it and I ended up snapping a bolt. So I'll talk to that later on at the end of this video. But uh, anyway, so the rest of this is just setting in the rest of the screws, getting them, getting them fairly tight, not torqued or anything, just tight enough to where I can start using the torque wrench. And... Uh, that's pretty much the final step on the the uh, rear spar, if I remember correctly. Um, so everything on here is essentially done. Um, I've got the doubler riveted in place. I've got the four elevator brackets, uh, hinge brackets installed. And uh, the last step is installing this bearing bracket. Um, and then after this, you move on to the forward spar. And... Uh, Yep, there's the mistake. That's where I snapped the bolt. And I'm looking at the torque setting, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so fortunately, I had an extra bolt. Uh, the, the parts list calls out four of these particular bolts, and I had a fifth one. Um, 
So, yay me. Didn't have to call Vans to order a replacement bolt. Um, but uh, I'm hoping I didn't misidentify a bolt, but uh, it seems to be an extra, so I was, I was fortunate in that respect. So I go through, get the rest of the uh, bolts out, and uh, put those in place, and then uh, torque all of these down to, I believe it's 25 or 28 inch pounds. Not a lot of torque, um, but uh, get everything taken care of. So I'm going to let this video uh, finish out. Uh, it's going to end with me discussing the uh, what I just went over uh, with the uh, issue that I had with the torque wrench. And uh, again, for all of those that continue to watch these videos, uh, I appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, by all means, leave them down below and I'll get back with you if, with any information that I can find. And uh, if you hit that like button, I'd appreciate it. We'll see you next time around. All right, so a couple things that uh, just, just happened here. Uh, working on the horizontal stabilizer and uh, I've got a good portion of the, the uh, rear spar assembled. Um, got the hinge brackets for, I'm fairly certain it's for the elevators um, and uh, the, the hinge here in the middle. Um, had an issue where even though I had clamped the hinge to the uh, tabletop, it still came out wobbly. So, drilled it out and uh, redid it. Um, this time I used my back rivet plate as a stable surface and clamped it down to that and it was much better. So I uh, was able to get that in. The other thing is I had gone down uh, to a local tool shop and picked up a couple uh, torque wrenches. The various bolts uh, in section 5.2 I believe it is has a list of, uh, yeah, 5.2 has a list of various torque settings for different size nuts and, and whatnot. Uh, so I got two separate uh, torque wrenches. One is a uh, 20 to 200 uh, inch pound torque wrench, which is this. And then the other is, I believe it's a 20 to 150 pound, uh, yeah, 20 to 150 pound torque wrench, which covers the range of the various nuts and their torque specs uh, between the two torque ranges. I've used one like this before um, back in the Navy. We had something very similar, but it was a very noticeable click, uh, you know, a breakaway when you reached the setting of, this, of the torque range. This one was very uh, minute and it's in, in, in mostly I think it's because it's such a small setting. I, for this for this here, it has you set it to 28 inch pounds. So very small uh, torque setting. Um, so when I first tried it, couldn't feel it, couldn't feel it, at least not what I was expecting anyway, and I ended up snapping the bolt. Fortunately, I had an extra in the kit. Uh, so put that in place. I had no other extras, so I was especially careful this time around. Um, but uh, I tested it on a bolt on actually on my uh, my garage uh, uh, hanger uh, uh, shelf system and tried to find what it feels like and it's very very small click uh, almost it's not even a click it's just a slight give uh, you feel the the shaft kind of uh, uh, shift over a little bit and that's that's what lets you know it's torsic so if you don't realize it you go right by it and you just keep torquing it down and snap the bolt like I did. So I would recommend if you don't have one or have little uh, experience using these, take it to a bolt that you don't care if you break it, uh, but set it to a low setting and just feel what it, what it feels like when it does finally give, just so you can recognize that a little easier. Uh, so that's what I did the second time around. Uh, got the uh, nuts snug and then slowly until I felt that slight give as you're applying pressure to the torque wrench, you have yeah, that slight give that lets you know that you've reached the torque setting. So just something to be cautious of, uh, something I learned, uh, and like I said, it's been a long time since I've actually used one, 
Uh, so it, it was a good idea to uh, get the feel of what it actually is like when it does uh, reach the torque spectrum. So, back to it.